Let's rewind a little bit. Give everybody a sneak peek behind what's going on in the studio. I'm doing a renovation right now, painting the walls, getting ready to put up the acoustic treatment after that. I haven't been filming much. I got a cold right now, so that sucks. Doing the edging, getting that finished up. The paint that I got doesn't cover very well, so I gotta make do with it. Everything from the studio just kind of wound up in this closet right here, thrown in there. I didn't really want to take everything completely out. I need to come up with a name for that guy. Let me know what you think he should be called. Got a fan running, try to air some of this out. Indoor formula and it's a natural paint, so the odor is pretty low, but it still gets to you after a while. It's a bunch of times where I got all pissed off and decided to scribble on the walls a little bit. I'm excited for the end result. I'll put the acoustic treatment up, show it to you guys, have more of a presentable space to do the videos in. Focus, damn it. So here's the final paint job. You can hear it's pretty echoey in here, actually. You might be able to hear that. With everything taken off the walls, it's amazing what a room will sound like when it's I mean, there's still stuff in here. You can see the amp is in here, and drill, the speaker. It's an older speaker that I was actually using as a table. The echo's really bad right now, and whenever I get the treatment up, that'll help. I contemplated doing a final coat. That's what I originally intended on doing to make it, you know, a very solid color on the walls. But then coming in today and seeing what it looks like with the subtle streaks where the roller was, you know, the little variances in color is darker and lighter. I actually really like that. So I'm going to keep it that way. It adds a bit of texture and a variance on the wall instead of just being one solid wall of color. And if you're curious, this is burgundy wine red is what was on the bucket, the five gallon bucket of paint. But yeah, I'm real happy with it. It looks good. Focus, come on. I'm definitely liking the variance in color there. I think that'll add a pretty cool movement. And plus, once I put the panels up, it'll break it up and it'll just have a little more depth to it, I think. And plus, you know, it's, it's my studio, so fuck it, right? I own this place, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a look real quick before I started putting everything back together. And I'll link all these videos together into one video and I'll be doing the video once everything's done. So now that you've seen those and you've seen... Probably in the last slog, this is the color that I decided to go with on the walls. The treatment's still not up. I'll be putting that up today. Some of it, there's a lot to put up, is 198 pieces. So that'll take a little bit. The way I'm going to do it, because traditionally the way you would put up acoustic treatment is you would use spray adhesive, much like this. And you would spray that on the back of the panel and spray that on the wall. And then after it got tacky, after you let it sit for a minute or two, you would put it on the wall. The problem with that is you run into the problem of whenever, if you want to remove the foam, sometimes you can't depending upon the adhesive that you used. And if you can, it will almost certainly ruin your acoustic panels and fuck up your wall. Speaking of walls, this is what the window turned out to be. Let me step to the side. So as you can see, I covered that up with the cloth and then lined it in cedar. And then for like my earbuds, which I'm actually going to do, not necessarily a review, but a video about these earbuds. These things are amazing. But I don't like having cables just sitting around on desks and thrown about. I like things to be a little tidy, so I have my sunglasses on, I can't see. There we go. I have a screw that I just screwed into the wood right there that I hold those up with. Same with my headphones over here, which you, right there. I just put a screw in the side of the speaker, hold the headphones. I was initially planning on doing a whole video about the renovation of the studio and then snipping it all together, but I decided to put it all in this one of what I've done thus far, and then as the slogs continue, you'll see the evolution of it. I mentioned in the last slog I was considering putting uh, the, all the guitars on this wall. I'm still considering that, but my idea... I have some curly maple, which for some of you who may not know, that's a, a figured wood. I don't have my guitars in here right now. Um, the figured wood that is on the top of most guitars is figured maple, whether it be flamed or curly. I have some flamed maple that I would like to use as a backing strip for my guitar hangers, or my wall hangers. See, these are what I use to hang my guitars on the wall. 
there. What are they? You don't see shit. Off the wall guitar hangers. And these are great. I've used these for years. They don't mess up the neck of the guitar. My guitars show zero wear at all on any of the guitars that I've ever used these wall hangers. They're wonderful and I have, I don't know, like 12 of them. You know, because I always want to have enough that whenever I expand the guitar collection. I used to have a lot more guitars too and I thinned the herd some years back. I had some rare guitars that I really regret getting rid of too. Some that I've been on the search to find again for quite a while. I haven't found them yet. But anyway, I wanted to take those and mount those to a flamed maple strip. It's about the size of the cedar here, wherever I am. The cedar there, you know, it's, it's like a, a one by four. And I was gonna mount it here on the wall, two of them, four foot strips. I was going to dye them black, sand them back, and then put some poly on them. Really bring the grain out. But it's winter, and I would have to do all that inside. And I'm not really a fan of attempting to dye wood inside a house. Because I don't know if you've ever tried to dye or stain wood. Those are two different processes, by the way. But it's not the cleanest thing in the world. I mean, you can be careful with it, but, you know, if you get a, some dye in the carpet, that's not coming out. So, I might just hang the guitars the way they were before. And then down the road, put that up and rearrange the guitars to have five of them on that wall. I'm, I'm still not sure about it. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I want to do. Also, I'd need to find the studs in that wall to make sure that the maple would be structurally firm enough to hold three guitars on one and two guitars on another because I wouldn't want to hang them up and then have my shit come falling down. That, that'd be sad. But with the acoustic treatment, I am weighing options as to how I want to hang it. Like I said, you can use the spray adhesive, but I don't want to destroy the walls if I need to take it off. Even though I own the house and all that, I can do what I want. It's just if it came down to, you know, if I sold the house or something, don't really want to redo the walls. Also, even more importantly, I don't want to ruin my acoustic panels if I decided to sell the house and buy another house somewhere. I want to take those with me, set those up again, reuse them. Nobody wants to just waste a bunch of acoustic panels. I mean, why would you do that? And if you use the glue, you're going to rip foam off the back of them, taking them down. And So I'm thinking about using that nail gun which is it's just a brad nailer uh, it's it's not like a, a nail gun like what you would probably think it just shoots these little nails just tiny things about an inch long of course with acoustic panels focus damn it there we go with acoustic panels i mean they're little foam blocks they're these things you don't need much to hold them up so just some brad nails in the corners would hold them up fine i think so long as the brad nails weren't too small on the head and the foam just fell off the front. I thought about stapling them. I like staples. I staple the shit out of everything. But with those panels, they're two inch panels. And when it, if you tried to staple them, I think it would cause creases where the staples would go. And it wouldn't look very well on the wall. It wouldn't look good. Wouldn't look, how would, wouldn't, wouldn't look like shit, I think. And I don't want that. Whenever I put them up, I want them to look nice. I don't want it to look trashy or janky so i'll figure that out it'll all get done and we'll be on our way to new videos with a less echoey room something that sounds better you know it'll look nice too on the wall and i plan on doing some live videos i've been working uh be i guess you could say behind the scenes I don't know, with private live streams where i just do a short you know few minute stream playing music or singing or something and then i go back and review it and hear the audio quality and look at the video quality on youtube and i think i figured it out to where the audio would be great the video you know whenever you're streaming the video is going to skip around it's not going to be whiz bang like it would like it is now where everything's smooth and whatnot but i figure as a musician the audio is probably more important than a video anyway i have a uh, my camera that i can use for the live streams and have a way of mounting that too so that it's not just looking at my nose or something so hopefully we'll get to that in the near future once i get the treatment up and get everything all set up again here in the studio so stick around for that I'm excited to do those. You know, they'll be live performances, so to speak, with actual good audio quality, hopefully. So we'll see how that goes. I might do one every month or once a week. I haven't figured out when or if I will put it on a schedule. That's something to be determined. It's the beauty about growing anything is everything is fluid. Figure it out as you go. But hopefully, you know, those will create some events where we can hang out and I can play guitar or sing or we can just chat or looking forward to that and on the topic of 
playing guitar. I've had some questions as to what uh, gear I use for my guitar rig, and the answer to that is Mesa Boogie. For my main amp, I use this. This is my two-channel Mesa Boogie dual rectifier, and then I have a Mesa Roadster here. I prefer the two-channel, even though this is to some a far superior head. I prefer the two-channel just because simplicity, it gives me the sound that I want right away. Uh, whenever it comes to playing guitar, you want to be able to feel what you're playing as much as you hear it, and to me that's what Mesa Boogie does. I run 6L6 tubes in here and also in here to the gear nerds they'll know what those are and then i have a custom built mesa 4x12 cab and then the tape is where my microphone placements were down there is where i had my sure beta 58 and then here i had a cad equitech 100 and I, some of you might ask why i don't use an sm57 and i'm thinking about buying one i haven't decided yet i want my sound to sound different than everything else you know the typical go-to microphone to record guitar cabs is the sure sm57 and with that, a lot of guitar tones tend to sound the same. Even though, you know, the amps will be different, or even if the amp is exactly the same, tubes will give you a subtle difference. I've been trying to get a good tone that sounds good, but is unique to me. Whenever you hear it, you know, it's like whenever you hear Rammstein, you know it's Rammstein. You, you know, they use a Mesa Boogie also. There's the explanation behind that. On the floor, there's the Roadster pedal board. This is a Zoom G7.1 UT multi-effects processor. I use that not in the signal chain to the amp. This A the Y box has a tuner out. So A is the two channel dual rec. B is the roadster. The tuner out runs to the zoom. The zoom runs out into the mixer board. So that's a completely separate signal path. And that's what I'll use if I want to get creative with some effects. I'm not really big into effects for my guitar, but if I want to, you know, just go into a different territory, try to get inspired in some other way, I'll use that, mess around see if an idea comes up. I use the Maxon OD808 as an overdrive. There's my settings for that. It's no secret. It's a very popular setting. I just use that as a, as a clean boost to give my two channel and the second channel of my dual rec just that, that extra bump to tighten things up, smooth them out. And you can see I zip strip the channel foot switch and the OD808 together. So whenever I step on one, I step on both simultaneously. So I never have to worry about double tapping with my feet to take the boost off of the clean channel. I just stomp on that and then that turns off and then that switches to the clean channel all at the same time. This is not a wah pedal. That is just a Dunlop volume pedal. I have a Dunlop wah pedal somewhere. I don't like it. Simplicity is key to my guitar rig, which I don't know, it might look complicated, but it truly is simple. And then this is my Furman power conditioner just to make sure that everything's running good in the amps. So there's kind of a quick rundown of the guitar amp area. In the future, I'll go through the different areas of my studio, like over there where I have my rack mounted gear my mixer and we'll go through and I'll explain to you everything that I use but for now it's guitars Mesa Boogie amazing so the tone that you hear on screen therapy and rot is from the two channel dual rectifier I quad track all my guitars whenever I record them typically it's the same guitar four times but on rot there were a few songs where I used two different guitars and one song where I used three guitars. So it's just tonal variances and you know what I thought the song needed and what felt right to me. If you guys have any questions about my guitar rig or want to know anything else, let me know. Put it down in the comments below. Anytime that we're in a live stream in the future and you hear the guitar playing, it should be the Mesas. I've yet to do a test with those to ensure that the sound comes through properly, but that'll be uh, something that I get taken care of soon. It should be those. I just run a mic from those to my mixer because everything runs through the mixer and then into the computer, so shouldn't have a problem with that. Getting the studio finished up, getting things taken care of, going to start putting the treatment up, and then look forward to videos to come.